is to the streets is to the mother effing screeds. It's your homeboy Low from the Go, and I'm back with another episode of Fast and Furious Interviews on today's show, ladies and gentlemen. We got a very special guest in the building, so I want y'all to show some love for my homeboy Yogi, man. Hey, yo, what? Why don't you tell the people what's going on with you, bro? I see just a lot of stuff going on in the background. What's going on with you, though, bro? Hey, 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 what's going on, fam, man? It's your boy Yogi Loco from Phoenix, Arizona, man, in the motherfucking building, man. What's going down? Yeah, you say you from Phoenix, Arizona, man. I know a lot of black folks that live in Phoenix and live in Arizona as as a whole, but uh, a lot of black folks don't live out that way. When I think of Phoenix, I think of, like, like Latin America. I think of Mexico. <laughs> so is it like that out there? Uh, uh, yeah, man, yeah, man. It ain't, it ain't too many, you know, uh, African Americans out here, man. Uh, uh, but, but you know, you do have a lot of Hispanics out here and shit, you know. Uh, but you know, it's just how it is growing up in Phoenix, man. I mean, I didn't grow up in, you know, it, like I said, it's black people, of course, you know, South Side, West Side, and the hood parts. But as an overall in the city, you know, it definitely ain't too many black people out here, man. All right, well, check this out. Uh, is it a desert out there? Hell yeah, it's deserts out here. Hey, let I me mean, ask you this. There's cities and shit, too. Like, I stay in the city. <laughs> it ain't like cowboy shit out here. Let me ask you this, because I heard y'all got scorpions out there. Like, we got roaches in the Midwest, bro. Yeah, we do got scorpions out here. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do got scorpions. <laughs> hey, hey, are they, do you open up your dresser drawer and see a scorpion sometimes? Uh, no, nah, it's really for the people who stay closer to the mountains and shit, bro. So the people who stay closer to the mountains, them is really the ones who, you know, predominantly run into scorpions and shit like that. You know, if you're in an in inner city and shit, you probably ain't going to see too many of them. Okay, okay. So what you're saying is if I go to Arizona and I open up a box of cereal, I ain't got to worry about a scorpion running out like a roach, right? Because I'm used uh, to no. a scorpion. <laughs> like, God damn. Nah, you good, you. <laughs> ain't, ain't gonna be, ain't gonna be no scorpions hopping out your lunch, uh, hopping out the cereal box. All right, all right, Yogi. So let me let me explain the show to you a little bit, man. Because on this show right here, I like to dig a little bit into the background of the people that I interview, man. That's why I always come up with some of the greatest interviews and some of the best content. So let me ask you this, man. What type of student was you in third grade growing up in Arizona, bro? Bro, I was bad. <laughs> bro, I was bad. Like, like I was a good kid. Like, like if you talking like actual learning and shit, man, I was I was a good student, but I was a bad kid. <laughs> you got to go in depth about that a little bit, bro. What do you mean a good student? Yeah, like, like in my elementary school, we used to get into we used to get into a lot of fights and shit like that. But like we was we was you know we knew how to do the work and shit like that. We just you know. Just got into a lot of fist fights and shit in my elementary school, man. That was like happened all the time, even in third grade, when I was fighting and shit. <laughs> right, because that's what I was gonna say. A lot of fist fights. I probably can't remember uh, like two or three people in third grade, and one of them was a girl, and she beat me up. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, hey, man, shout out to you, man, Connie Wilson. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, girl. Hey, but look, check this out, man. So, if you was already fighting back in those days, what was it like for you in eighth grade, bro? Oh man, eighth grade was actually pretty much chill, bro. I think I only got into like, I think I got into like two or three fights in eighth grade. Okay, so that was a chill crazy. period. That's crazy. That's backwards more than, you know what I'm saying? The people I talk to when I say fourth grade, a lot of people say, well, I was a bad child and I was used to cry and run away and do this. But you, you, you said the total opposite of what most people say. So let me ask you this right here, man. I got to go back. Was you raised in a two parent household, bro? No. Uh, my dad went to prison when I was like six. What type of man was your father? Uh, shit, man. From what I was told, man, he, he was a hustler, bro. He was, he was from South Phoenix, man. Uh, you know, he was definitely about his money, man. I remember him having a job and shit like that. You know, I ain't gonna go into too much details of why he's in prison, but uh, you know what I'm saying? He was he was definitely he was definitely from the streets, bro. I remember him working and having a job and shit like that. So uh, I don't I don't remember you know that portion of the stories I get told about him. You feel me? I seen somebody else. But uh, most of the stories I hear about him, you know, it's 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 really some street shit, some hood shit. But, you know, I, I guess I just, you know, 
I was kind of young, but like I said, I remember him having a job, and you know, I don't remember this nigga like selling no, telling no dope and no shit like that, bro. So, but that's just you know, I'm the young, I'm one of his, I'm his youngest son. You know what I mean? So all my older brothers and shit, they have way more experiences and stories with my dad than I do. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, he went to prison when I was only six. Uh, and I think I didn't really have any communication with him. I think I talked to him like once when I was like 12 or 13. And, you know, I still email him and shit nowadays. Like I was an adult and shit, I email him and we chop it up in emails all the time. Um, but growing up, I didn't have too many communication with him. Uh, just, you know, due to the reason why he's actually in prison and just he couldn't really contact my house, you feel me? So I wasn't able to really talk to him growing up until I was like 18 or older. Then I could have just hit him up on my own. You know what I'm saying? All right, so um, you said a lot without saying anything right there. You know, my next question was going to be, uh, is he still in prison for the same crime that he was locked up way back then? Yeah, that was his third strike. <laughs> So he got life. Yeah, yeah, he got life. He got multiple life sentences. Wow. He got oh, probably like he got like four or five life sentences. And by you not being able to talk about the case, it's not like he ran in the building and robbed the bank and killed the bank teller or something like that, then, right? Nah, it wasn't nothing like that. It's 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 a lot more personal than that. I don't really want to get into it though. We ain't got to do that. No, I don't, <laughs> I'm not I'm always talk to you about you know what I'm saying. That part we'll leave out just out of respect to the people involved and shit. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm I'm not gonna bring that up because it does seem like it's a very sensitive sit uh situation. But I do have to beat around the bush, you know what I'm saying, just to figure out a little bit about you. All right, so when your father was locked up, you were six years old. Back. All right, and right now you you how old today? Uh, man, I turned thirty three in a couple of days. I, my birthday's on the sixteenth. I'm thirty two right now, but I turned thirty. Basically thirty three. I turned thirty three on Monday. And you say uh, he 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 will get. He's not never getting out because he got multiple life sentences. Yeah, he'll never get out ever. All right, so at six years old, when you found out your father was going to jail. Was you sad or happy? How did that make you feel? Uh, to be honest, bro, I'm gonna keep it a band. Like, uh, I remember, I remember him telling me like he was about to leave and shit. And the next morning, like he was gone, type. He was out of there. So I like initially, I think you know, you a kid. So like in my child mind, I'm like, this nigga ain't going nowhere. Like, you know what I'm saying? My dad ain't going nowhere. I'm about to wake up. He gonna be right here. Woke up and he was gone. And like I, you know, never seen him again. Type shit, bro. Like they never told me really what he went to prison for. They just told me he went to prison. So, like, a lot of my younger years, I never knew what he was in prison for. So I kind of had to develop something in my mind of why he was in prison, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I was hurt, bro, if you want to say to keep it real, bro, because I remember, I remember, it ain't like I didn't remember him or I didn't have any memories with him because I did. So it was like I knew that nigga was my dad. I knew exactly who he was, you know what I'm saying? He was just, you know, at six years old, you got a memory. So it's like, to me, that's that's what he was. It was like the night they told me he was, you know, he was about to go away, and the next morning he was gone. Um, you know, I was, like I said, I was only six, so, like, I didn't get the detailed conversations and none of that. It was just, you know, a lot of the shit I found out, it was when I was older. You know what I'm saying? I was probably like 17 or older, you know what I'm saying? When the motherfuckers really started breaking down and was like, hey, look, this is what happened. This is what's going on. This is who's who and you know what I'm saying? And then I kind of really knew what was up at that point. You know what I'm right. saying? But, you know, my dad is always going to be my dad, bro. I look just like that nigga. So, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of what happened, that's always going to be my dad, bro. Uh, but yeah, my nigga, that fucked me up. It's still gonna fuck me up to this day. Like my kids know who he is and shit, you know what I'm saying? And uh like I said, bro, I look just like him. My kids' grandparents look just like him, you know what I'm saying? I try to keep in contact as much as I can. Uh but yeah, bro, you know, even as a grown man, you know what I'm saying, you always gonna feel some, especially me having kids. It's like that grandpa in prison, they can't go see this nigga just do a video call, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my seven-year-old was my first one of my kids that was like 
you know, they wanted to see who he was. It was like, who's your dad? You know what I'm saying? So my son, Noel, was the first one of my kids who really wanted to know who my dad was, what he looked like. They wanted to see his face, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <clears throat> type shit, so. All right, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Right? So your father goes to jail when you're six years old, right? Right. All right, and you didn't believe that he was gone, gone. You thought that he was coming back, right? Yeah, yeah. Part of me did when I was younger. I probably believed he was coming back, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, I did, actually. I used to think he was coming back, but, you know, the adults then, you know, they knew what was up. So, like, they didn't really entertain that shit, though. That All right, was so, I think he ain't coming back. <laughs> so, let me ask you this. At what age, at, at what age when you was a shorty, did you realize he wasn't coming back? Middle school. Uh, was what, eight? I, was like, I was probably like 12. So, 12 um, so from 6 to 12, <clears throat> you thought your father was coming back, but at 12, you realized that he wasn't coming back. Right, like at some point, but at 12, that's when I really became aware of the situation, and I was like, this nigga ain't coming back. You know what I'm saying? I already knew, like, like I said, my my adults in my family didn't entertain that shit on either side, but they didn't lie to me about it. They was like, this nigga's not getting out, fam. So it's like they didn't, they didn't, you know, they never really told me what happened, but they didn't really want me to keep believing this nigga was gonna get out. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> All right. So at 12 years old, man, emotionally, how did you feel when you realized your father? Was it never getting out? Uh, mixed emotions, man. Mixed emotions, bro. Uh, it was mixed emotions, man. It was it, it was mixed emotions. You know what I'm saying? I was mad, uh, but then again, I kind of understood because you know what I'm saying the shit. So it's like it was a little bit of both, bro. I was mad, kind of confused. You know what I'm saying? Like like I said, I was still young, so like. Didn't grip the whole, but it was like I knew it was, you know, fact this nigga ain't coming back. So, <clears throat> all right. So let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. All right, Dylan. Once you found out, I'm assuming that you found out around 12 years old what happened with your father, right? So, once you found out what happened with him, how did you look at him at that point? Different, different. You know what I'm saying? Uh, how's it different, bro? Um. Yeah, man, I you know, I definitely had to look at him a little bit different, bro. Had a lot of questions. Um but yeah, man, definitely definitely didn't really look at him the same at that point, bro. You know what I'm saying? But I'm always love my daddy, my dad, but definitely didn't look at him the same like that, bro. Like like some trust or some shit was broken if you want to say like. All right. Yeah, I, I I understand exactly what you're talking about. Like, I can feel what you're going through, right? The other day I was watching the show, and they had a question, right? So a father was uh, convicted for life for having his wife murdered, and he had a couple of children, right? And he got the death penalty for killing his wife. And the question was brought up to, is it right to take both parents even though this parent you know maybe he could explain himself um some type of way maybe he could redeem himself or uh you know repent what he did and is it is it right for that parent to be took away from this from by the state you know what i'm saying because now you, the kids lose both parents all right so my thing to you is the situation happened now you're 12 years old what type of emotions are you feeling? When I was 12? Yeah, as far as your father not being there and then you finding out, you know, that he's a lot not. Of back on. A lot of anger, bro. I got real, I was a lot, I was pretty mad. A lot of anger. To be honest, man, I, I was pretty mad. Bro. What type of trouble was you getting into around that time? Middle school, bro, I probably wasn't doing too much, man. You know, I was linking up with some shorties, probably smoking some weed, fighting, uh, shit like that, bro. I wasn't on no real wild shit. We was ditching school, 
just kind of normal shit, bro. That was normal to me in middle school, man. We was ditching school. We was fighting. Not too much fighting, but it was like every now and then you might get into a fight. You know, we was ditching school. We was smoking weed. Of course, I didn't really know. I didn't know where to buy weed and into none of that when I was in middle school, bro. Like, when somebody I used to hang out did, like one of the older homies used to like basically get his weed, bro. And only one of us knew how to roll. None of us knew how to roll or none of that shit. So we was relying on one of the homies on the street. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was smoking, it was with this one, with the one homie and we wouldn't smoke, but for nothing but to like get the munchies and eat and shit. Like <laughs> we used to smoke back in there for all different reasons. Like we would go smoke a joint and go raid motherfucking refrigerator and shit and eat up all the food and shit. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, so you going to high school, man. Um, what you doing in high school, man? High school? Man, high school is when I started, uh, you know what I'm saying? I got caught up in the gang shit, bro. At one point, I was playing football. Uh, I had a problem staying in school, bro. I ditched a lot of school. Uh, high school, I went to a lot. I went to probably like five, five <laughs> different high schools. And shit, so I used to ditch a lot of school, and, you know, my mom's was, she got tired of that shit, bro, because I used to, like, ditch school a lot, like, all the time, bro. So, you know, it was points in my high school where, you know, of course, I would have to probably wasn't in school for, like, a couple weeks and shit, just be running around the hood and shit. So, <clears throat> my high school year was, was uh, pretty much that, bro. Um, trying to stay in school, trying to stay out of trouble, but was always landing in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hey, did you graduate? <clears throat> no. Mm -mm. When did you drop out? <sighs> Shit, man. I think it was my junior year, junior year of high school. Uh, no, nah, actually, bro. I think, I think, I think it was either my junior. Maybe I did do some senior year shit, but uh, I think by then, bro, I was in like alternative schools, bro. In the last school I was at, I was like, fuck this. Like, I was the smartest person in the class, so I was like, I can't do this, man. Like, I'm not going to this school. And I think no other schools was really fucking with a nigga around where I was at and shit, so I thought eventually I was like, fuck this shit. But I started working when I was, like, 16. So I was already on some, like, at 16, I was like, man, I need to get some money. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I was already clicking into working and shit. So at some at one point, bro, I just started working and shit. Like, fuck it. Uh, you know, I also tried to go back and get my shit, like my GED and shit like that. But I never really graduated high school. All right. So looking back, bro, looking back, do you feel you made a, a, a big mistake by not going ahead? Because you was in 11th grade. You only had like a year left to go, maybe a year and a half. Looking back, man, do you feel like you made a mistake? And do you feel like it was mental health issues because of what your father went through that you ended up leaving school? Shit, bro. Like, to be honest, bro, the reason I left school was like, shit, man, because I used to ditch a lot of school, bro. And I used to go to the hood, hang out in the hood, bro. If you want to say, man, got kind of caught up in the shit, like, uh, you know what I'm saying, but I guess I have more time to go do the extra shit because of the time where I was actually like out of school, you know what I'm saying? So to me, it was like, shit. I guess one day I was just like, man, I'm not fucking with this shit, if you want to say, like, if, but to answer your question, like, if I could go back, bro, I would have finished like high school, I would have did that shit. I, I should be playing football somewhere. Type shit. Yeah. You dropped out at in, in your junior year. How old was you? Was you about sixteen? It's about sixteen, bro. Probably like sixteen. That's the age that you started working, right? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. I used to work at Fry's, man, but I lost that job because I got bit by a spider and shit. Oh my God! That's why. I, see, that's why I said the scorpions. And shit, bro. Oh that motherfucker still on your arm from sixteen. Hell yeah, bro! They said it'll never go away. I was helping somebody move, bro, and had got bit by a spider, and I never got bit before. So like, it took like a couple weeks before I went to the hospital type shit, 
and it looked like I had like a tennis ball in my arm, bro. When I went to the emergency room, they was like, bro, if you would have came in here 60 minutes later, we was going to have to amputate your arm and shit. So like, I actually got lucky. You know what I'm saying? I went when I went, because if I would have waited an hour later, it was a wrap. I would have lost, I would have lost this whole arm. Man, y'all crazy down there in Arizona. Y'all got spiders that's biting off arms, motherfucking scorpions hopping out of cereal boxes. Oh my god, I'm I, I ain't gonna go there. I know a lot of people that went there. I'm not going. I ain't gonna do that. Shit. Fuck that. I rather deal with our snowstorms. You know what I'm saying? Eighty people dying in the fucking snowstorm is what I'm used to. All right, well look, let me tell you this. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. All right. So, um, before you get your job, you need money, right? Right. How you get money at that point before you got your job? Shit, man, probably was uh shit to be honest, bro. Little odd shit here and there. Little odd shit here and there, bro. I don't think like I was really hustling. I think I may have tried it out at that time. I probably like tried to do a little bit of something, but then you know what I'm saying, probably didn't end up really doing it like that, my nigga. That's kinda how that's kind of how I ended up, like, working and shit, bro, like, type shit. Because I was, when I first, first started working, I think I was still, like, going to school and shit. So I would, like, go to school, and then I would go to work type of shit. I was only working, like, part-time. All right. Was you rapping at that point? I was starting to rap, bro. I was starting to rap at that point, bro. I think I was just more like freestyling and shit like that, not really taking it too serious at that point. Okay. Look, a lot of people, because I'm from Chicago, a lot of people don't understand what's going on in Arizona, man. So at that age, man, at that age, right before you dropped, right before you dropped out of school, what's the gang situation like out that way? Oh, 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 it's gangs out here. I'm from the south side of Phoenix. There's definitely gangs out, out, out in Phoenix, man. There's gangs out here. What gang ran your neighborhood? Uh, 40 Block. That's where I'm from. I'm from 40 Block. Uh, I grew up in the 40 Block. Uh, it was from 48th Street to 40th Street. What is that considered? Bloods, Crips, Disciples? Crips. Crips. Hey, Crips. Hey, Crips. Yeah, out here it's predominantly, you know, you got Crips, Bloods, uh... You know, you got the Mexican gangs and shit. You know, most of them either fly black or, you know, blue rags and shit like that. Got some Norteños started popping up out here recently and shit, bro. Uh, shit like that, bro. That's that's the majority of the gangs in Phoenix really is either Crip or Blood or, you know what I'm saying, at this point, should be the predominant would be Crip and Blood out here. All right. So, uh... <laughs> You chose to hang out, you know, at, in your neighborhood, which is the Crip neighborhood, right? Who was y'all right. rivals? The people that y'all hated, y'all fought with at school or whatever. Shit, uh, out here, bro, we, most of the black people was fighting Mexicans and shit out here growing up. Like, a lot of the people we was fighting was Mexicans, bro, to be honest. Uh, there was a lot of black and Mexican Wow. Shit happening out here. Shit, bro. It, that's before my time. They was having black and Mexican riots uh, years before, uh, you know what I'm saying? We was getting into it with their ass and shit. It was, that wasn't really a gang thing, though, but it trickles down to the gang thing. That was more just a race. Like, out here, it's like that, bro. Like, not too many Mexicans really like black people like that, you know? So, uh, whether they say it or not, you know what I'm saying? It, it's Back in the day, it was like that. You're going to run into some motherfuckers who just don't like you, you know what I'm saying, or vice versa. So uh, that's that's why, bro. I don't know. Um, I can give you an off-the-top quick answer, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, bro, I feel like that go a little bit. That's a little bit earlier on in me on where the shit really started from. But you know what I'm saying? Most of the time, bro, it was going to be another race he was fighting out here. It really wasn't going to be... You know what I'm saying? Like, you got white people who going to say some racist shit to you out here. You might use the square up, to square up with them as an adult. You know what I'm saying? You still going to still be happening out here. You know what I'm saying? You got the white people who say little slick shit to you out here and shit. But, uh, of course, they going to watch what they say to the, you know, white motherfuckers. But shit like that still happens out here, bro. So it's like California, man. Uh, we got race. Essentially. 
essentially, bro. Essentially, like it ain't too bad. Like I got some Mexican homeboys, bro. Uh, you know, I fuck with a lot of Mexicans, so it ain't like it's just all oh, fuck all them niggas. Like you know what I'm saying, uh, the ones who don't like you, it's evident. You know, it's evident out here a motherfucker don't like you or not, you know what I'm saying? Like, you going to see it off the dribble. Let me ask you this, because in Chicago, man, uh, we been toured with the Mexicans, and you can't walk through their hood and all that. And I put it like this. I say it, it, it's, they, they call it gang banging, but it's really race banging. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is out there, race banging. Mm, not really, bro. Cause it's a couple neighborhoods, like it's a couple Mexican gangs that may have a couple niggas in them. Yeah, maybe, no, a, couple Mex- right. maybe a couple Mexicans and and some niggas is. You know what I'm saying? They're hanging out with the niggas and shit. So I wouldn't necessarily say that because I've seen all kind of races with a bandana. I've seen almost. I've seen white people, Mexicans, black people, uh, Islanders and shit. So. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it was too much race based as far as the, you know that goes. I don't think niggas out here race banging like. Uh, of course, if anybody say something funny to you, you know what I'm saying, you gonna react type of shit. So. Right. <laughs> some, right. On, on, race, on a race issue, you know what I'm saying. If somebody say something racially disrespectful to you, you gonna react. Right. Yeah. You know all right so now you're 16 years old you done hustled a little bit you started your job you know how you feeling when you get your first paycheck oh i was happy in the month <laughs> i was happy to the motherfucking shit around that time man that was decent money you know what i'm saying i was smoking good i was i was decent i got paid every week uh i was handling the checks right you know what i'm saying i had me a little bit of money put off eventually so it was cool bro i was cool you know what i'm saying i wasn't mad about it it was pretty decent money to me at the time man all right so i asked you about your father man now let me ask you about your mom man what type of mother was your mom Oh man, the best best woman ever, man. My mom had my back from young, from kid to now, bro. My mom helped me through a lot of shit. Uh, man, definitely, man. My mom is wonderful, man. I love the hell out of my mama, but she, 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 she definitely held it down for me, bro. Growing up and still now to this day, man, she still got a nigga back. So uh, my mom was wonderful, bro. My mom didn't smoke. My mom didn't drink. She didn't do none of that shit, you know what I'm saying? So all I ever saw my mom was do was work and stay on her shit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, she ain't smoke, drink, nothing. Was never on drugs or nothing. My mom got her master's degree and shit. So it's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? My mom was, you know what I'm saying? She, she, was, on, she was on her shit, bro. Oh, wow, man. That's that's a great story right there about your mom. You know what I'm saying? Black women are the most educated in the United States, according to uh, the Democratic Party. But let me ask you this. All right, so it's a, it's a Republican state out there, Arizona, man. DMX used to go down there, and uh, he used to have guns and shit like that. You know, they can't have guns in New York. So, so is it a lot of guns out that way? It, is guns everywhere? Hell yeah, everybody got a gun out here. It's legal. To, it's legal for us to have guns. Everybody could have a gun out here. My cousin, man, he actually passed away last year, man. He the one that really got me in the studio. Uh, I started like recording when I was seventeen. When I was seventeen, I recorded my first song. It was called "Liquor in My Cup" with my homeboy uh, Don Millie. He still rap too. Uh, but that's the first song. That's what that really got me going. We actually recording, hitting the studio. But I was seventeen. Uh, and you know what I'm saying? The homie put me on the track, and you know what I'm saying? It's been up from there, bro. Right, man. You know, when I listen to your 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 records, bro, I hear the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? So who is your biggest influence in hip-hop? Tupac. <laughs> Tupac. Tupac, hands down, man. Uh, my favorite two artists is Tupac and Eminem. Uh, but I listened to heavy of them both, but uh, growing up, I listened to way more Tupac and shit. And especially being in Arizona, bro, you're going to hear predominantly West Coast, you know, California artists and shit off the dribble. Uh, 
you know, that'd be majority of the that'd be majority of the artists that we hear out here. Okay. So tell me about your last project, bro. Uh the last project I just dropped was called Rashad Tremaine. It's out now on all platforms. Okay. <laughs> what was the inspiration behind that project? Uh, I wanted to give people a more in in depth look into me, bro, through my music. Like uh, that that album was a lot more personal. Uh, that's why I named it after myself, Rashad Tremaine. You know I'm saying I gave people more of a, uh, if you want to say, a personal take on me through my music. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Hey, do me a favor. Why don't you tell me who was your top five artists of all time? Top five artists of all time right now? Yeah. I would say Nipsey, Tupac, Eminem, E-40, and uh, I would say like Jadakiss. I said Jadakiss, my last one. Wow, uh, uh, East Coast nigga, huh? I listen to East Coast music. I listen to Joel Santana, I listen to uh, Jada Kiss, I listen to some 50 Cent, I, listen, I used to listen to Papoose, I like D-Block, you know what I'm saying, uh, Dipset, uh, I, I, actually, I actually am a fan of East Coast music, bro, believe it or not, <laughs> I listen to East Coast music, but I listen to, I listen to a little bit of everything, bro, some East Coast, some West Coast, down South. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, my ears is open to all kind of music, bro. Right. You know, when I when I when I talk to you and you let me know that you're from Arizona and that y'all listen to a lot of West Coast people, and when you name some East Coast people, it kinda got me a little bit trippy right here, man. Um, did you feel like y'all really wasn't a part of the East Coast, West Coast war? Nah, nah, not at all, bro. It's the Southwest, man. <laughs> it's the Southwest. I don't consider Arizona the West Coast, bro. We ain't got no beaches out here. <laughs> it's ain't nothing but desert, man. It's the Southwest. Right. Plus, you know, DMX made that his home, you know what I'm saying, for a while. So it it got to be like some people that's showing love to people from the East Coast. You know what I'm saying? Right. Facts, facts. I mean, you got certain people out here. Like, my mom is from California. My mom is from Compton, California. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but for the most part, bro, I didn't I didn't see people really on no East Coast, West Coast shit out here. But maybe listening-wise, like, maybe you're going to have people who prefer Tupac over Biggie and vice versa. Like, them type of debates still happen out here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Be like, nigga, who you, Tupac or Biggie? Like, some motherfuckers out here gonna be like Biggie. Right. You know what I mean? They gonna have a legit reason why they fuck with Biggie over Tupac, you know what I'm saying? So that's really as far as it goes is the East Coast, West Coast is, you know, it really be on some rapper who's better than who type shit. But that's as far as it went out here, bro. It wasn't no real, like, it wasn't like how they was getting down over it out here. Okay, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Um, if you could bring a rapper back from the dead to help you out on your project, who would that rapper be and why? If I had to bring back one rapper to help me with a project, shit, it'll, be, right. two, shit, it'll be Tupac, hands down. Well, if I could bring back one person to help me with one project, it would be Tupac Shakur. And I said, and why? Shit, man, because the type of because that number one, that experience would be priceless. Um, and he was he was he was so ahead of his time and even with the music, he was able to get so many messages out to people, bro. Like, uh, if you had somebody like that helping you behind your project, bro, that would be classic. We talking about somebody who he probably still in the billboard charts to this day. You know what I'm saying? So to get somebody like that, if you was able to, you know what I mean? That would be a that would be priceless. You know what I mean? It would be that would be a phenomenal album. If you had your choice to get signed by a record label, man, what record label would you want to sign with? You said, bro, to be honest, I wouldn't sign to no big record label, bro. I don't think I was on. Uh 
But if I like, if I really, really was assigned to a label, what label would I sign to, bro? Shit, bro, I don't even know. Uh, shit. I would probably go to Yo Gotti and them label, man. They got some shit going over there. Okay, okay, shit. I that's would try to go to Gotti and them label, man. Shout out Yo Gotti, man. Sound like a plan to me. Facts. <laughs> if I had to go somewhere, I think I would. I would, I would, I would go. To, I would go to Young Yo Gotti label for sure. Man. All right, where you see your rap career in five years, bro? Shit, man. Uh, expanding, bro. Uh, hopefully, I'm in a way better position. Hopefully, I'm like living off this shit in five years, man. That's the plan, bro. Uh, you know, I'm always. You know, I always believe there's always room for improvement. There's always ways you can get better and create new shit and, you know, keep your shit there and keeping it consistent, bro. Uh, the way I'm moving in five years, definitely, man. Uh, hopefully, I'm making some out-of-state moves and really getting, you know, real-life paper off of this shit, bro. Uh, you know, got to just keep putting in the work, man. What's the next project? RK Bully 3. RK Bully 3 should be dropping in probably less than a week or two. Should be out in like a week or two, man. That's my upcoming project, RK Bully 3. No features, straight me the whole way through. Okay, man. Yeah, shout out, shout out, shout out. Let me ask you this, man. What can the people find you at, bro? Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, exactly how my name spelled on the screen, Y-R-G-I-L-O-C-C-O. Uh, anywhere that streams music, man, you can find some of my music on SoundCloud, but go to iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, Tidal, YouTube Music, YouTube. I got music videos out. Uh, I got a few in I got a, a couple other few interviews you may find from a year or two ago in there. Uh, but I got, I got a, I know I got at least five albums out. I got at least five albums people can go check out, man, and go listen to, bro. Oh man, hey, I'm about to check out every last album from this man right here. He got an incredible story, and I hope that you open up a little bit more, you know, in your music and let people know exactly what's going on in the communities, bro. Because sometimes we got to open up and be a little bit different than everybody else, you know what I'm saying? And let people know that the same thing that happened to you affected me in this way, and I'm going to tell it to you so that way, if you're going through the same situation, right. you always look to. You know what I'm saying? A brighter way, a better way, man. That's what I think need to go on. But I've interviewed a lot of people that did not want to tell me what their father was arrested for. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to go into those type of things. You know, but I always find out in Chicago what, you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, damn, you know, what shorty say he from down here, you know? <laughs> so I always find out because a lot of people know me in the city of Chicago, man. But shout out to you, Yogi, man. Yogi, oh, yeah, Yogi man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, man, this was a great interview right here, bro. Hey, we're going to do some more work in the future. But, you know, right now, you know, this is called Fast and Furious Interviews. We get in, we get out, man. So oh, yeah. where they can find you at, man, tell the people once again where they can find you if they want to do any link ups and where they can find your music. Uh, if you're trying to add me on Facebook, it's Rashad Yogi Brown. Uh, my Instagram is Y O G I I L O C C O underscore B C A. And you can find me on Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, Tidal, YouTube Music, anywhere that streams music under the uh, Y O G I I L O C C O Yogi Loco. <laughs> or hey, you can look up, or you can look up Bird City All Stars, and it'll pull up one of my albums that way too. Hey, brother, man, I'm I'm really glad that I met you today, man. I wish you prosperity and peace on your journey. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, I just want to say peace. Peace out, man.